Hello, everyone, and welcome to the book gathering with our new book that we are going through this week and this month, actually, How to Make Millions with Your Medical Spa. So I'm so excited because we have been going, we actually completed part one, and now we're moving into part two, which is all about marketing. And today we're going to be covering the importance of having traffic. The title of this chapter is Traffic, Traffic, and More Traffic, and that's exactly what we're going to talk about today. Now, in case this is your first time joining us, we have uh, great, exciting things to always share with you, all kinds of business strategies to help you elevate your success. So if this is your first time on the Inspiration Management channel and you are looking for ways to improve your business, whether it's a medical spa, wellness center, or a day spa, you are definitely in the right place. You should go ahead and subscribe to this channel because we are always putting out great content to help you elevate your success. And don't forget to ring the notification bell So because we give out so much information and we're always publishing new videos. So make sure that you get the notification whenever we publish a movie. So I'm so happy you're with us today. Again, we're actually live on YouTube, on Instagram and Facebook. And with me today is my partner in crime here, Sarah Lampkin. And we have Sarah back there managing some of your chats and questions. So make sure you get involved. Give us a thumbs up if you uh, are with us live and make sure to leave some comments and also your questions. So I know in part one, we talked about your financial health. In case you missed it, missed it. All these videos are actually on YouTube and you can go and check them out. The part one was filled with great financial strategies that we shared with you. And it has a lot of great information. So you can actually get started with that. And in case you don't have a copy of Dory's book, you can go on to Amazon and dot com and get yourself a copy yep. as well as inspiration management and get yourself a hard copy. Yeah. So, so nothing like having a book. In like, your hands. You, you got to have, have a book. Yeah. So. You know, a lot of people are into the uh, online downloads or online reading. Uh, I still like having a hard book because hard cover or a soft cover book, because it's so nice to be able to mark it up and highlight it and make your notes. I think it's very important. Well, that and this weekend I went to grab a book and found it digitally. And then I looked and saw my device wasn't charged enough. And I'm no. like, I really <laughs> wanted to read that. So I'm like, yeah, get the hard book, right? Uh, so. Yeah. So, all right, well, let's go ahead and get started. So hopefully you read this chapter already because it's filled with a lot of great information and we're going to expand on that information now and help you a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. And before we get started, you know, Dory, you've launched two new shows this past week. So yes. you want to kind of give them a little pre yeah. update on what your two new shows were? Yeah, well, you helped me do I it. Did, but She's becoming, let me tell you, we do have a producer that comes to the office and helps us out but she's becoming like the assistant producer here she's gonna probably run circles around him in just about a couple more weeks <laughs> Not, she's, be she's <laughs> becoming so good at setting up our studio and we have we're almost all done actually it's amazing mm -hmm. i'm so excited and so happy that we were able to do this yeah. type of space and the two shows that we actually launch one of them is meet the experts yeah. which we are now actually there's going to be two segments to this mm -hmm. show we're doing meet the experts that's business to consumer so if you have a medical spa wellness center a practice and you want to expand your positioning and become that expert we can interview you and then you'll be able to take this footage and use it as part of your marketing strategies. Actually, this is a perfect time to talk about this because we're talking about marketing. And then the other show that we did was Dory Talks. And that's going to be where I share with you business strategies and you'll be able to find both of them on YouTube. And we're going to be putting these out every single week different meets meet the experts and then the dory talks is going to be at least once a month and then whenever we want to add additional benefits so it depends on my mood Absolutely. 
know. I'm so excited because we've actually, we had an expert in the, the office, office that yeah. got to shoot live in our studio. And mm-hmm. then we've had several that got to join us virtually. So yeah. it's so exciting. I know it was a lot of work getting the studio set up, but we're starting to see the rewards from all that hard work from yes. our team. And it's so nice. I love coming in here and kind of being under the show lights, if you will. That's right. right. <laughs> and we have lots of lights. We do. Let we there be of- lights and there's lights. <laughs> And that was probably the hardest part, actually, of setting up the studio is the lighting. But so it's all good. So grab your notebooks, grab your how to make millions book. Some of the tools we're going to be talking about today is the marketing plan. We're going to be talking about the flying high uh, marketing series that you launched yep. as well. Oh, my gosh. Every time I turn around, I feel like you're launching something new. Actually, one of our clients, I was doing a private coaching call the other day, Dr. Erhard. Yep. And she's like. You're always coming up with something. You never stop. <laughs> well, and the nice thing is it's always something new and innovative that it really they can take, implement, and it's making difference yeah. right away. It does so, make a difference, that's and for then sure. The third tool we'll be talking about is the marketing assessment. Yeah. So with that, you ready? Ready. Let's, let's go. Talking about traffic. Marketing, marketing traffic. traffic. Yeah. Traffic, traffic, traffic. So let's start off with asking you, one is, what is the biggest mistake everyone makes in regards to marketing? Uh, the, the, well, there are several, mm-hmm. but I would say the biggest mistake as we start talking and working with people is the lack of a marketing plan. Mm-hmm. I would have to say that's probably the biggest mistake. And I see a lot of people reacting rather than planning and being proactive. And that's really sad because some people still operate under the old adage, build it and they'll come. Well, that is no longer a valid option. I would not recommend that at all because you need to have a plan. And if you don't have a plan, then you're winging it and winging it does not quite give you the results that you're looking for. And when we're talking about traffic, traffic requires planning and having a marketing plan is one of the most important things for you to do even if you don't plan out the whole year i mean i understand but at least like the three months to plan and know what you have coming up for the next three months what is the focus what's the theme what are we trying to accomplish and the more you plan the more you're going to succeed So then let me ask you, you talked about the marketing plan. So what's the most important part of that marketing plan? Oh, that's my favorite thing. And that's lead generation. You got to focus. I mean, when it comes to marketing, that's number one. That's the foundation. Because if you don't focus on lead generation, and as you know, Tara, when we do the Leap Ahead seminar, whether it's person or uh, virtually, we, I always ask people, what is your lead generation strategy? And a lot of times they look at me like I have two heads, like, what are you talking about lead generation strategy? And that is the foundation, literally, because if you don't focus on generating leads, then the rest doesn't apply. <laughs> you can have the most beautiful building, the best team, the most skills, Uh, Here you are, all experts. But if you don't have leads that are coming into your sales funnel, and then you have that whole process in place as we teach you the business model that we're talking about here. So you have to have the leads. And then once you generate the lead, you have to have the process in place to make sure that you convert that lead from a lead or a prospect to an actual consultation and then to a client. And that's, I think, is the biggest problem is a lot of people don't have a strategic plan on how do we generate leads. They just, again, leave it for a chance. And that's really what I want to talk with everybody about today is give you some great strategies that will help you generate more leads. And the more leads you have, the better off you're going to be. And we're not just talking about random leads. We're actually talking about real, I mean, Target market target leads, market leads right? Mm-hmm. Like their avatar. And I know you're going to get into that mm-hmm. a little bit further, but it's just, you can't just have random. Yeah. You, you, gotta have you want real, them to be qualified. Right? And, you know, we're coming up with a new seminar that we're going to be doing on demand. And that's called the millionaire mm-hmm. circle. And the millionaire circle seminar is all about going after the affluent. See what we offer as a med spa owner or wellness center or whatever 
it's all discretionary income. People don't have to have Botox. They don't have to have fillers. They don't have to have uh, body contour treatments. So you're talking about people that need to be able to afford what you offer. And if you don't go after a certain target market that can afford you, then what happens is they start doing the Groupons and the discounting and they start playing the price war games. And it's just, it's ridiculous because if you're trying to be the cheapest and you think by being the cheapest, you're going to attract more people, that's the wrong attitude. You definitely don't want that. I feel like you were on my coaching calls, not even like three hours ago, because they do Groupon and they're like, yeah. well, that's how we've gotten all of our clients. And I'm uh, like, they're not clients. I'm like, how often do they come in? And they're like, only when we do Groupon. I'm yeah. like, they're, they're, they're coming to you because you're the yeah. cheapest on Groupon. Exactly. So she's like, well, how soon should I stop Groupon? I'm like, yesterday. Yesterday. <laughs> like, yesterday. like yeah. stop it. Yeah. It, it doesn't help you. So there are many ways to generate leads, but again, it's the qualified lead, the person that can afford you. And that's really what we want to get into a little bit. It's giving you some ideas of how to generate those leads. So Dory, you're always talking about the importance of building the prospect and the client list. Can mm -hmm. you elaborate a little bit more on this yeah. for our audience? And that's one thing I think a lot of people, when we're talking about generating leads, of course, is taking these leads and really nurturing them and turning them into a client. But the bigger that list of prospects is, then the more you're going to be able to convert into clients. Your list is your most valuable asset. If you don't have a list, you have nothing. So I was doing a private coaching call myself the other day. Actually, it was uh, Friday. And the person was telling me that the spa down the street from them, they were a medical spa, and this spa down the street from them is going out of business. And I asked my client, uh, actually, she's a member, and I said, did you contact them to see if you can buy the list? She's like, oh, no, I didn't think about that. I'm like, that's like right. the most important thing, because if they've been in business for a long time and they just could not survive the COVID situation, then you need to contact them and see if you can buy that list. Having a big list of qualified clients is the best thing you can do. And it should be part of your exit strategy as well as your success planning, because the bigger the list is, the more money you'll be able to sell the business for. Because that's what people really are buying. They're buying your book. They're buying your list. They're buying what you have. And if you don't focus on that, like they make fun of me all the time because um, I have to check what we call the web form report. So people uh, can either opt in uh, from your website or YouTube or here or there. And every day I have to know how many people actually opted in. In case you don't know what an opt-in is, an opt-in is when you make an offer online or other marketing strategies and you give people an enticing offer to actually provide you their information. Once they provide you their information, then you're building that relationship to turn them into a client. So if you're not focused on that, then you're really missing out. It is so essential to focus on building your list. And the bigger your list is, the more successful you're going to be. So if you're not paying attention or if you don't have a goal of how many leads you need to generate per day, per week, per month, per year, then you're not doing marketing properly. So you're saying that someone should consider their list having a dollar value rather than if they're just looking at their billion, building costs this much money, the equipment costs this money, they need to put value on their list as well, yeah, right? Absolutely. And right. the more, the stronger and the more engaged the list is, like when you send out an email, how many of these people are opening up the email? How many of them are buying things from you? How many of you them are engaging with you? And the more engaged your list is, and they are truly in need of what you offer and you have this great relationship with them, then the better off you are. So when it comes time to sell your company, you have this additional income that you could be asking for because you have a great list. And that's really what marketing is all about.
So you're talking about you encourage that client to potentially buy that list. And so if anyone is listening, would you say just because a spa, med spa shut down during COVID doesn't mean that they have a great list. It could be the fact that they poor plan their money financially, right? They, we've talked about this last month where you need to have like six months stability. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Doesn't mean that they don't have a great list that you should want to invest in looking at. You you should always look at what they have because they have people coming in, right? So I would definitely look at it, see how many emails, because there are different types of lists. So you have some that are complete with name, phone number, email address, address. So the more complete the list is, the more valuable that list is. But if I just have a name and maybe just a phone number, as a matter of fact, a lot of people make the mistake with the opting in process. A lot of times they don't ask for a lot of information. And you really need to, you need to get their name, you need to get their address, you need to get the email, phone number. And that way, when you go to market, you can market to them in different ways. You can do a direct mail piece if you have their address. You can do an email blast if you have their email. You can do text messaging if you have their phone number. So it's silly not to capture as much information as possible from them. So you have a good, valuable list. So then let me ask you, um, for those that are already in business, what's the quickest way to build a bigger list and Mm -hmm. gain more traffic? That's a great question. So the best way, if you're already in business, I would do a big push campaign for referrals. That would be so economical. It's not going to cost them a lot of money. You can do a register to win like Mm -hmm. we teach all the time. Uh, do a register to win something grand and then ask everybody to refer friends. And then you're giving away one winner. We had somebody that did a referral campaign and they were able to generate over 1000 names just from the referral campaign that ran for 45 days. So you could do the same thing. So that's very easy. The other way is they can always do a a social media campaign. So like whether it's a video campaign, it could be Facebook campaign, Instagram, Instagram uh, promotions. So you're getting people that are similar to who you already have, because if the people you already have are good quality people, then you have to go and get people just like them. So, and as you know, Tara, we always talk about lookalike audiences. So if you have a list already, that's great. Then you can upload that list into Facebook and then find that lookalike audience and then market to them. And that's a very quick way. Now, be careful when you do something like that, you should, again, do either a register to win or sign up to receive a complimentary gift card or something like that. So now you have an enticing offer to take them to a landing page where they can actually opt in and give you their information. So if they just did these two things, a referral campaign and some kind of a social media uh, advertisement, you'll be able to build your list much, much quicker. So, and then we all know, I mean, your leap ahead, although we missed everybody in person, you Mm -hmm. had, we had the virtual and your marketing plan has over two, over 72 different ways Mm -hmm. to market their business. Right. So to me, that's a no brainer to have my hands on that marketing plan that you did. And I'm sure right by now you could probably add a couple more hundreds. I know. (laughs) Actually, actually, we need to update that now that you make giving me more, you're you're giving me more work. You're fired. I feel like when I give you more work, that makes more work for me yeah. too. It just trickles right on down. Oh, she so, wants to give me more work. Yes. If you're here live with us, uh, make sure you're commenting, pop- popping in any questions. That way we can answer your questions as we go throughout. We definitely want to get Dory's input on all your questions live here with us. So um, I'm going to move on to the next. So let's say someone is starting out. Mm -hmm. What's the quickest way to start building that tier list since we've already talked about people in business? Yeah, I have to say the best way to really build quickly when you're brand new is establishing all kinds of business to business relations. So I would see who my neighbors are and then team up with them to do some joint venture marketing where we can, again, use the gift card as an idea where they could send out an email blast to their database Mm -hmm. or invite them to an event if you're able to do events in person now. And what you would do is you offer something so great. Again, it has to be enticing, an enticing offer 
to where they can go to a landing page and actually opt in to receive a gift card or to come and pick up a gift. Or if you're a published author, they can come in and pick up a book. So, I mean, we have so many clients that we've helped publish books where they use the book as an enticing offer to come also. By the way, we're doing the book seminar. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, write your book in one weekend. I'm so excited. We're doing that next week. So if you want to be a published author, you need to uh, join us. You can do it virtually. That's how we're doing it. Well, like but, you said, it puts your business on steroids. Oh, my who, gosh. Who yeah. doesn't want, like, when you get a copy of Dory's book, it's not just a copy. It's a signed copy yeah. of Dory's book. And that has so much value, yeah. right? You don't get signed copies of stuff much anymore. Books, yeah. So our clients being able to do that and having their clients come in and getting a signed copy. It's is huge. Amazing. Yeah. And it's a great way, again, to gain opt-ins. Mm -hmm. Like we give away my book for free on our website. And the reason we do that is because when people opt in, they're getting the book. So think we get thousands of people uh, in a year from just actually the book. And what did that cost us? I mean, it cost us five dollars to right. to right. Um, right. print print the book, five to seven dollars, depending on how many how thick your book is and how many copies. But what a inexpensive lead generation cost. Right. Because you have people using Google AdWords spending thousands and thousands of dollars on silly marketing where you can become a published author, use your book, you just improve your positioning. We're going to talk about that in the next chapter, as a matter of fact, all about positioning and how to improve your positioning and how to attract people to you rather than to keep pushing yourself at people. So if you're brand new, business to business relations is definitely a good way to go. And then the other way is Facebook campaigns. Actually, Facebook is a great way to generate new leads. Again, but you have to be smart. It can't just be an ad. That's not enough. It can't be an ad and then have no place to go. You got to do those landing pages. And if you don't have a landing page to drive traffic from the ad to the landing page so it can convert at a better rate, then you're missing out. So it, it is a science. You have to really plan. And if you have the marketing plan, by the way, if you're a member with us, uh, you have access to the marketing plan. It comes in a Word document. You can take it, customize it. And if you don't have it, like Tara said, you should definitely get your hands on. And if you got the leap ahead. You, you were getting yes, we gave it away mm -hmm. as a bonus for the leap ahead. So yeah, that's definitely, we're so nice. We, we need to are. we need to stop doing that. We're giving so much. <laughs> so you mentioned Facebook ads for those that are uh, not in business yet. They can still do that. And before you mentioned about doing a lookalike audience, in this case, they wouldn't be doing a lookalike no. audience, but they could still run that ad. They could run the ad, but they just select who they who really want. For. So instead of going with what you have you're creating a new audience within your community. Now, remember, you're only going to advertise to the people around you. And what's nice about Facebook advertisement is advertising that you can pick exactly who you want the ad to show up for. You can pick demographics, psychographics, exactly whether they bought uh, Medispa treatments before or not? Do they usually get massages? Do they get facials? You can really drill down to the exact target market that you want, and now you're effective. So if you do it that way and you take them to that landing page to opt in and get their information, now you're on top of your game. But if you're just advertising and you don't have a purpose of generating a lead from that advertisement, then you're just spinning your wheels. But you know what, Tara, is so sad. We, we, sometimes we joke about it, but it's really painful for us. We have so many clients that first, when they come to work with us, they tell us they're working with a marketing company here or there. And it's amazing to me how many marketing companies don't get this whole opt-in process. I mean, if you set up your opt-in process on your homepage, just like I told you, we do. I want you right now to go to inspirationmanagement.com and see the opt-in process that we have on that page. You need to do the same thing. We do it for clients when we build their websites. So if you do your opt-ins right on your home page of the website, once you set it up and you set, set up the sequence that goes with it, 
you're golden. You don't, you're generating leads without really having to pay hundreds of dollars for a lead. It becomes so minute. And that's really the, the big secret I want to share with you today is that your online presence, your website is one of the best places to generate leads. And if your website is not generating leads for you, then it's nothing but an online brochure. And online brochures are not going to generate leads for you. So it's like that little Go employee, that Energizer bunny that works 24-7 for you, right? Yep. It's got to work 24-7. So Absolutely. when you're sleeping, trust me, there are clients up searching yep. who couldn't sleep, looking for all these treatments. Well, they couldn't and- sleep because they're not making any money and they don't mm-hmm. have their marketing shit together. Right. No, I'm talking about their <laughs> clients, right? So- uh, you know, I find myself so many times looking well, at both. different things at night, right? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So, and the difference is what you said. So many marketing companies will just put one item, like yeah. just your name or just your email. Yeah. And what's that going to do for yeah. you? How often is that's e- that's even people- if they or join our mailing list? Right. Like, I'm going to hurry up and do that. Like, I need one more email in my inbox. <laughs> So I was going to say, when you have working people, like we have time to go look at our personal email, yeah. look at specials and things like that. People are busy. Mm-hmm. So it's important to get For all sure. that information. Yes, right? it is. So we've talked about how to build a list and how to do all these fun things. So Dory, so let's talk about not if they're not monitoring their marketing effects and a major is a major problem right now, right? Cause they are getting so many leads, yeah. but they're not monitoring it. Yeah. So can you share they with our measure. audience what they should be doing to monitor yes. the marketing effects that they're putting in? For sure. And that's actually the second biggest mistake. One of them is they don't have a marketing mm-hmm. plan. The second one is the ones that do marketing, then they don't measure. measure. Like how do you know which campaign actually worked or did not work? So um, I was doing our Brewing Brilliance with our members the other day, and I gave them this tip. So I'm going to give you a freebie here of something I shared with our members. One of the most important things you should do, and we do this internally, by the way. So whenever you send out an email blast or you do a marketing campaign of some sort, I want you to get a binder and I want you to print whatever that marketing thing is. And then right on the printout, I want you to put on there, who did it go out to? How many people did it reach? Uh, What was the open rate if it was an email blast? How many people uh, actually clicked? So your click through rate, how much revenue did you generate? And it should all be right there in that binder on that one ad. So let's say it's Thanksgiving now coming up. So I can go to last year, look up my binder, look up what I did last Thanksgiving, see what my results were, how can I improve it for this year, make my improvements, and then measure again. Now, if you do that, you're going to be like Wonder Woman or or Superman when it comes to marketing. But if you're not doing that, and you, you don't even have your guest relations team asking, well, how did you find out about us? Or where did you see that promotion? Or if you're not using a code, to identify, again, which promotion generated what for you, then you're not doing that right. And you know what's really sad for me is a lot of people spend, I mean, there are some people that are spending a major amount of money. And then when I ask for the results during our calls, they're like, oh, I don't know. That's not acceptable. I don't know is not acceptable. You gotta know. So start this binder. Put all your ads that you do and then write the results on them. So that way, you know, from year to year to year, what is working and what is not. So when should they pull those results? Should they grab that email the next morning, maybe a week out? When, so when it, I, I would do actually a couple of different times, depending on how long the campaign ran. So I would want to do the initial results and then what actually came, like you said, either a week or two weeks after. But the guest relations team, They've got to have that pull down in the software system of exactly all the campaigns you have going on now. So when they ask that question, how did you hear about us? Then they can do the pull down, they can select. So then you as a leader or your manager or your director can actually run those marketing reports and see exactly what was happening. Sorry, I've got a question. Sure. Mm-hmm. So I have... Uh someone asking about you mentioned inexpensive way of gathering leads and 
he says, um, what, how do we know what's inexpensive? Oh, that's oh. a great question. Well, inexpensive to me is free. <laughs> 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 but no, seriously, um, it depends on what you're talking about. Let's say, let's take the opt-in from the website. Let's say you're doing a first visit gift card for anybody that has never visited your place before. And let's do both examples. Let's say if you're a day spa, most of your treatments are about maybe 100, 150, maybe 200. So you want to give a gift card maybe for about $25. So if you do that, that means you, you basically, it costs you $25 to generate that lead. But what you want to look at is once you paid that $25, you want to see what is the initial revenue you're going to generate from that. But then you have to take into account the lifetime value of that client. So the longer you can keep a client, then the less really that lead generation cost becomes. If you're a Medispa, I usually recommend they do a $100 gift card. So yes, maybe I paid $100 to have a client be generated. However, for a Medispa, your average revenue per guest is usually $500, 1000 We have clients that are averaging $1,200 a client. So the $100 is really a very small amount, again, taking into consideration how much revenue you're going to generate on that first visit and then the lifetime value of that client. So I would not, I mean, depending on how deep your pockets are and the value of your guest, of your lifetime value, if you're going to keep a client for a long time and they're going to spend thousands of dollars with you, then you don't mind paying a little bit more for lead generation. But if it's one and done, not good. Of course, you want to try to keep it as minimum as possible. And what I love about the opt-ins from online, like what I'm just talking about from the website, is that once it's set up, you're done. So your only cost, there's no human capital cost. There's no operating cost. It's set up. You, you do it and you forget it. And the only thing you're giving is that gift card when they come in to redeem it. And you don't mind doing that. True. And there's stipulations. And like you said, the lifetime value. I mean, we have a client that put just a year value on a client and they're over sixty, seventy thousand yeah. dollars She has no problem giving a hundred dollars yeah, to get $70,000 in a year. Yeah. So it, it, I think so many people get caught up on that initial, mm -hmm. but they forget about that. Or, or they, value. they get cheap about what mm -hmm. they want to give away. Don't be cheap on that because again, there's really not a lot of expenses within that. But then we've done Facebook campaigns and or advise people to do Facebook campaigns. And we've generated leads for as low as 50 cents True. or a dollar or two dollars. So if you're smart, you can really play this out based on what is the lifetime value of your clients. And the higher the lifetime value is, the more you're open to actually paying a little bit more if it's a qualified lead than not. So really, it's a big science to figure that out. But I'm glad she asked that question. That's a quick answer yeah. for that question. When I think some things to consider as well is, you know, we talk about if they're giving percentages off all the time, they don't think about that. They're like, oh, my gosh, they're going to come and use it on yeah. 10, 20 percent off. Mm -hmm. If they're following our system where mm -hmm. we teach not to give discounts, exactly. then this hundred dollars doesn't even come yeah. to a factor well, at all. And it also comes up to about 10 percent because True. if they come in and spend one thousand and you're giving them one hundred. But it's a much nicer way than to yeah. say to someone, I'm going to give you 10 percent off. Well, that's what everybody else does. We don't like to do that. So instead of saying, I'm going to give you 10% off, we're going to tell them I'm going to give you a $100 gift card. Now, doesn't that sound a lot better? That's what we're talking about. Yeah, it's just all a wordplay. Absolutely. Yeah. It, well, it's a whole process. It is. That you're putting through. And it's a mindset. When, mm -hmm. you, when you accept this mindset, like I had a coaching call with someone and I was explaining this to her and she's like, okay, well, that makes sense yeah. now. She's like, now mm -hmm. when I tell my team we're not doing percentages off, right. I told her, you know, we we – do do percentages off twice a year, right? Yeah. But she was like, okay, this makes sense. I'm on board. So it's very easy to adjust to. Yes. It just takes a little bit to understand that concept. Yep. And again, it's just a different way. Groupons. And yeah. I'm like, we got to get rid of all of that. Yeah. So I'm allergic to that. So I know we've already said that we don't like Groupon mm -hmm. stories. So do you think Google AdWords are a good way to market a business? 
Wow, um, that's a great question. Now, I have nothing against Google AdWords, but they're not my favorite thing to do. They're just so expensive. And again, most marketing companies do it wrong because they're just sending them to the website and then the people have to go hunting to find what they're talking about. Well, I would prefer if you are going to do Google AdWords, you better take them to a specific, again, landing page so they know exactly what you want them to do. But you go look. Uh, so Google AdWords, what am I talking about? So when you search something in Google, usually the first thing that comes up is the ads, right? So and people go clicking away. And every time you click, whether they buy or not, you're paying. So there are so many other in this marketing plan. We have over 70 different ways to market your business. And not once did I say do Google AdWords. I mean, I had one time uh, a client send me their PL statement. We were doing a financial assessment, a brand new client. And they had spent over $100,000 on Google AdWords. And they were bleeding. The business was bleeding. They did not convert hardly anything from that $100,000 investment. It made my heart bleed. There are so many other ways to market your business than doing Google AdWords. That's a lot more economical and they convert at a much better rate because everybody's fighting over the same word. You know, you're doing Botox in whatever city or you're doing fillers or cool sculpting. Why would you want to compete on that? And then your competition goes and starts clicking away and you're paying for all the clicks. Well, that, and I think so many people in the just Americans don't understand the concept of what ads are if you're not in this industry and they're just clicking. They really don't understand what it means. And like you said, you drive them to a page and then you have to tell them they have to go hunt. I like about the landing pages when you talk about it and the client's filling it out, you're telling them you're going to get an email with Mm -hmm. this. You're going to get that. And they know what to expect, right? You're going to do a consultation, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. They don't have to go hunt and question what's happening now. Yeah. Like I have no idea. I think the landing pages is one of the things, one of the biggest missed opportunities that most people don't do in their marketing plan. And I have to say landing pages are probably the most important thing. So if you're doing a campaign, it doesn't do you any good to just take them to the website. And that's where most marketing companies go wrong. They just send people to the website. Good luck. No. So a landing page is an extension. Maybe we should define that a little bit. It's an extension to your website. And if I'm promoting, let's say, cool sculpting, then I'm going to take them to that specific promotion that has to do only with cool sculpting, with whatever the offer is, with a call to action, and make sure that they opt in. That that would be my whole purpose of the landing page. Well, and the nice thing is that if they do it the right way, that, that form that's on there, they're going to know that they came from mm-hmm. cool sculpting. Why would you send them an email about laser hair removal yeah. when their, their focus is cool sculpting, right? Mm-hmm. You can market other ways to them. But I also, can I ask you, when they're doing these landing pages, would you say that it's correct that it's adding value to their SEO? Oh, absolutely. Um, not on, because if they do the right, right uh, content on correct. it, it has to have smart keywords. It has to have good content. It has to add value to the person that's visiting. And actually, Google is changing the way that their algorithm is continuously changing. So the more content you put on your site, whether it's a blog, it's a video. I mean, we do so much, whether it's an article that you've written, a white paper, uh, most frequently asked questions. So the more you feed the monster, (laughs) Google or YouTube or other platform you're using, the better off you're going to be. Um, I want to switch over and take a couple of questions here. So I have a question from Alex and Mm -hmm. he's wanting to know, Dory, what are your top three marketing strategies? Mm. Well, I'm totally different than everybody else. My number one marketing strategy is video marketing. That's why we're doing all the new shows. That's why we did the studio. It's all about videos. And if you're not doing videos right now, you are totally missing out because you know what? Your competition most likely is not doing videos. So if you really want to crush your competition and take away some of their market share, 
start doing videos and you will just kick their butt. And, and to say they don't have to go this long. No, they don't right? have to do this. I've seen some very nice videos where they have just one of those mm -hmm. pop-up banners with the, uh, what's that? The step, step and repeat with mm -hmm. their logo. They mm -hmm. have a nice camera that they can get and have it yeah. on a tripod. And it's very simple yeah. to do. Yeah, it doesn't have to be, you know, this mm -hmm. extreme. I mean, right. we went all out, but yeah, it doesn't have to be. And I didn't start this way by no. any means. Right. I mean, I remember when I shot my first video, my banner wasn't even like nice and tight and straight. It was like, I just started doing it. And it was awful. And you'll see my short, dark hair. <laughs> Go back and check it out. You'll see it on YouTube. It's still up there. there you can. You can but, see. Uh, so video is definitely my big thing. The second big thing is really writing, becoming a published author. And these things don't cost you a lot of money, really. But writing, I have to tell you, it's one of the most important things you can do. Because, again, the more content you put out, the more people see you as the expert that you are, the more you're going to attract people that are looking for that expertise. You're going to improve your positioning. Again, we'll dive into that a little bit more in a couple of weeks, but it has to be that. And I love, love between the two, the video and the writing. If you just do these two things, you will totally, totally set yourself apart from the competition. And then we're talking about taking these two things and putting them on their website, mm -hmm. on YouTube, on social media, mm -hmm. so they can just keep feeding Repurposing it. Repurposing it, yeah. And, and if I remember correctly, you just did this with our mastermind members where you talked about it's not just random content, it's mm -hmm. content that has value, right? Absolutely. It, it, it's purposeful yes. content. Yes, And so those that are members, I'm sure have already watched this and are like, oh, I know what I need to do now. That's right, <laughs> so. that's right. So the third thing would be a toss up. I mean, there's a lot of different things now. I love speaking. So to, for me, speaking would be the other way. And again, I just gave you three things that actually we teach in the Millionaire Circle seminar on how to attract the affluence. Because when you're attracting the affluent, they want to see you in person. They want to hear you. They want to see what you've done as far as writing. And then they want to see you speaking. So speaking is great to go to conferences and speak or go to different chapters in the community and speak, or doing webinars like during the coronavirus, we taught everybody how to do webinars. I mean, all these things are really very cost effective, very economical, and they will give you a bigger reach and bigger attraction for people to come to you. And frankly, these are the three strategies that helped us build a multi-million dollar business right here, Inspiration Management. They work. Let me tell you, they work. Well, and I have to say, I mean, Shelby Miller, who's a member, mm -hmm. look at, go look at hers and you see her doing videos. Mm -hmm. She speaks at conferences. Yeah. I mean, she writes content. So it's proof that even if you're not in a business mm -hmm. of concept, mm -hmm. these can still elevate your oh, business. I mean, she has what, 95 K plus followers, probably over a hundred now. Yeah. But I mean, she's constantly growing and yeah. she, she was a member before she yeah, did I think, all this and followed your strategy. Yeah. I think the biggest problem that stops people from doing this is wearing the multiple hats. As we make fun of that during the leap ahead, we have people wearing all the different hats. And that's the problem is when you start wearing many, many hats, what do they say? You're the mass, the jack of all trades and the master of none. Well, if you want to take your business seriously and truly become super successful, I'm not talking about just, you know, somewhat successful. I'm talking like joining the, the top 5%, the top 2%, the top 1%. That's, that's where you want to be. If you want to be there, then you need to do these things that I'm telling you to do. It will totally separate you from everybody else. But the problem is that you're trying to do so many things that you don't block time or you don't designate time to do these things. Like, do you think I have time to sit down and write articles? I make time because I put it on my calendar. Do you think I have time to shoot videos? I make time. I put it on my calendar. So it's all about blocking time so you can do the things that I'm telling you to do. And once you do that, well, I have to say on side note, she doesn't just block time to record it. She actually look at her calendar and blocks time to prepare Prayer she for mind it. maps. Mm -hmm. I mean, you teach in the leap ahead about mind mapping mm -hmm. and you mind map what you want 
your purpose of each video, mm -hmm. your purpose of each article, so that mm -hmm. when you're ready to do it, you're not just standing here saying, uh, what, what am I, I going to talk about? <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever heard Dory say, what am I going to talk about? Yeah. It's, it's not a question she has because she already knows. Yeah. You've already mind mapped that purpose out. Mm -hmm. And to me, that makes it more productive when you're in here oh, you're yeah. shooting, you're done, and it's not. Yeah, we day. take one shoot and we're done. Right. Yeah, like we don't. But Speaking of topics, so Tuscan Ink Skin Spa says hi. Hello. But has a question. What is the topic of your most successful webinar? Ooh. What is the topic of my most successful webinar? Well, I would have to say, if you went to our YouTube, probably um, I think it's the ten, to opening up a ten, ten mistakes, ten mistakes oh, on boy. opening. Actually, you can go on our YouTube channel and you'll be able to see the most views. Mm -hmm. uh, probably is that video. I think it has something like thousands and thousands of views. I'm not sure. Is she asking what's like the most popular biz tool that we have, or just like webinar? Yeah, I think as far as success uh, webinars, I would have to say marketing usually are probably one of our most viewed because everybody needs more traffic. I think that's everybody's biggest problem. As a matter of fact, we've done surveys in the past and many places run at only about 35 percent of their capacity which is terrible. So if you have a room, that means you're only busy three and a half hours maybe in that room out of the whole day. Well, that's not good. But the reason for that is because the lack of focusing on lead generation, the conversion, the client, the whole purpose of having them come in for the consultation and then converting them into a client. So really the root of all problems is lead generation for people being slow. And that's probably the biggest, biggest challenge everybody has is they don't have enough clients and nor do they make all the efforts that they need to actually gain more traffic. That's, that's really the biggest obstacle that we come across for people. So that's what most people are searching for. So I would say marketing probably would be the most popular things. But yeah. then every everything is. It's so, so hard. Then, yeah, I think everything, but I do agree with you. Marketing is so key. So you're talking about marketing and Dr. Carter's on here and wants to know, uh, you talked about websites. So do you build websites, Dory? Yeah, well, actually we do build websites. <laughs> we do. Yeah. It's crazy management does. Yeah. Dory is yeah. not a coder. No, no. That no. is not a topic. No, I don't. No, <laughs> that, 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 I, no, you're not going to see me doing your website. No, mm. but uh, we do come up with the structure on how to build an effective website, though. We have the model for it. And my team knows how to do it now, how important the opt-ins are, how important the content is, how important the URL is for each page that you have, having e-commerce, um, having good, valuable newsletter or blogs or videos. So we like you to have all these components in your online presence. So when people find you, they're like, wow, I want to reach out. I want to opt in. I want to go visit them. But if I just go to your site and it looks like everybody else's, then really it does not make a difference. So my advice to you is to call our office and talk to one of our team members and they can guide you through the process or at least share the process with you. And we focus so hard to make sure those revenue streams are in place mm -hmm. on that website. And it's not like you said, nothing there, right? A brochure. Like it's, yeah. It's not just a brochure and not a technical business, uh, doctor's no yeah. novel. I had yeah. someone send me content for their website and I'm like, is this a business lecture book? Yeah. Like, I'm like, no one's gonna understand all this. Is it a college, journey. is it a college I course? Like, <laughs> I was like, I didn't know I signed up to go to doctorate school today, but we're about to. Um, so in, you know, we're getting close here, Dory. I wanted to ask you, what is one thing they can start to generate leads right now? I think the easiest thing, and we've seen people do this actually the very first day of the leap ahead or the first module where I would speak about the opt-ins on the home page, where you can do a first visit offer, you can do register to for the newsletter, you can do ask an expert, you can do uh, case studies, ways for them to really get engaged with you. And if you just do the first visit offer on your website, I'll guarantee you, when, once you put it up, 
the very next day you'll start seeing people opting in and generating leads and that would hardly cost you anything so if you already have a website and you just need that home page remodeled just with opt-ins call us up and we'll have, be more than happy to set one up for you and start generating leads that would be the most economical and the easiest thing they can do to start getting opt-ins and the most measurable that's what yes. i love and i've got one more question from tuscany again and she says how do you overcome the fatigue especially the mental stress from covid challenges you need help <laughs> you hire a firm like say. us to help guide you uh, fatigue is not a good thing because you're doing nothing but draining yourself. So really, it's all about delegating, prioritizing, uh, making sure you have the right team around you to really help you because there's only so many hours in the day and there's only so much you can do yourself. Like I would, I would be crazy if I didn't have a team around me that's capable to do the things that they need to do. So, um, I, I think delegation would be a big thing and prioritizing. So only do the things. If you catch yourself doing something, and this annoys me, by the way, all the time, is if you're doing something, you need to be asking yourself, is this getting me closer to my goal? And if it is, keep doing it. If it's not, stop. <laughs> stop. Don't do it anymore. And it makes a big difference, but there's a difference is something that I talk about actually in some of our webinars online on YouTube, the difference between being productive and being busy. Being busy brings fatigue on. Being productive energizes you and makes you feel like, oh my God, I can't wait to do the second thing. So be careful on what your tasks are for during the day and only do the things that are going to make a big difference as far as the results. Well, and to me, this goes back to what you said, like we've talked about so many strategies and we have 72. You're not asking them to go implement all 72. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. And that's why you focused on that first time visitor gift card. It's yeah. a very simple, doesn't take a lot of effort. You won't mm -hmm. get fatigued on it, but if they just start picking these little low hanging fruits, if you will, mm -hmm she'll start going through all yeah. of these strategies. And I don't expect you to go do this yourself. No. Like I would never want to sit down. Like I had a doctor one time on the phone telling me that they built, he built his own website. I'm like, what the heck? You're a doctor. Why are you building? Like I would never, I'm a business advisor. I'm not going to go build websites. You hire people to do that. Mm -hmm. So I believe that we all have our expertise. So if you stick to your expertise, and do only what you do best. And then you let the others do what they do best. There's no reason for fatigue. I mean, you're just going to, you're going to keep plowing forward and keep innovating and keep right. trying new things. So just be careful. Don't get caught on that uh, hamster wheel where you're just running and running and running and running. There are so many people in that situation. So many people in so that situation. So this kind of leads me, you know, in your book, Dory, you broke it down so easy for them. But then mm -hmm. at the end of each chapter, you told them shortcuts to yep. success. Yep. And to me, I think this kind of goes perfect with her question about not getting fatigued. So mm -hmm. for this chapter, your shortcut to success was amazing. I mean, you don't give them a lot of homework to no. do, right? Just little. So create your enticing offers to gain your opt-ins. Place opt-in opportunities on your website and all the marketing campaigns. Mm -hmm. Set up and automate the process after visitors opt-in. Mm -hmm. Track and keep testing your collateral collective efforts. Use your software system to identify the campaign performance. Yeah. And I think one thing you mentioned before is people don't use their software mm -hmm. and then they're guessing and they yeah. don't know what where the form mm -hmm. is going. We had someone say that, well, when someone fills out a contact form on your website, where do they go? And they're yeah. like, we've never known that for a year and i'm like <laughs> for a year they've never known but it's so important yeah to know. absolutely so i think if our audience just used your keys your shortcuts to yep. success they'll start makes knocking a, pieces off makes a big difference and then again as i mentioned before you know recapping on those tools to help you with these shortcuts to success is our marketing plan we have an event planning webinar mm -hmm. because we're everyone's trying to go virtual and start getting those holiday mm -hmm. events in we have the website opt-ins and then designing and branding. Yep. So making sure that everything flows and it's uniform to who they are. Yeah. So 
those are great little shortcuts and i would definitely if you don't know exactly what to do you can always set up a success planning session and let one of my team members go over what would be the best solution for you right now it's totally complementary and if you want to take advantage of it great if not then that's okay too that's something so else either. we're giving away for free. That's right. Because <laughs> it has value. Yeah. Can we go ahead and share the name of the book one more time? Yep. So we are talking about how to make millions with your medical spa written by yours truly, Dory Sukup, and it's steps to implement a proven business model and delivering a great guest experience, which is our ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. So you can get it on inspirationmanagement.com or as well as on Amazon, depending yep. on what, whichever you prefer. And uh, leave us a review, please. Yes. Um, anytime you purchase it or you feel like, you know, this was a great event for you, leave us comments, share, uh, go on Amazon and leave us a review. We would love that. And subscribe to YouTube. I think that's a, the huge difference that you could do. Um, and the next chapter I'm so excited about because it's, again, one of the most important things you can do as far as marketing. It's all about positioning, how you position yourself as the experts that you are so you can get paid your true worth and not have to worry about discounting and truly attract the quality people that you need to your place. I'm well, super excited. That's why we put so much time into doing things like our book seminar next mm -hmm. week because you want our clients to have the opportunity to be able to elevate themselves Absolutely. in the competition. So if you do not know about what we're talking about on our uh, Becoming Published Book Seminar, so we are doing it next week. Yeah. We're doing it virtual and in person. So it'll be Monday and Tuesday. I invite you to go to becomepublished.com and that way you can see a video, see how what the purpose and why you should do this. And then hopefully you will be joining us next week, either in person or virtually for the Become Published as well. So sounds good. I think with that, we are right on the hour, Dory. Yes, so, that went by so fast. Know, it always does. It does. It's like, boom, it's gone. Well, when you're talking about <sighs> such great topics, yeah. it doesn't go slow. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for everyone that joined us live. And then for those of you that are re-watching this, if you have any questions, please reach out to us. We're here to help in any way. And as always, Dory, thanks for inviting me to participate with uh, you. Thank you. Thank you all for yes. joining us. Stay safe and healthy. And until next time, stay inspired. Bye, Bye. now. Thank you.